OK, welcome. So what I want to do is show you how to find what is a translation or shift. So what I'll do is I'll just kind of go back to, uh, let's do a little geometry here. So back in geometry, uh, a lot of times when we talked about shifts is, you know, we just picked a, um, we just took a figure, and then we just said, hey, let's just shift it or slide it um, to the right, left, up, down, and so forth. And what we kind of noticed, though, is if we had a point, right, um, we knew that each point had an x and a y coordinate. So if I was going to be shifting to the right, let's say so many units, I would say this would be x plus h. I'm going to add the, whatever I'm shifting it, uh, that's going to be added to the x coordinate. And if I was going to go down, then that would be x um, comma y minus h, right? Now, one thing Dustin mentioned, if I was going to slide to the left, actually, we'll call this k. We'll call this a different value. If I was going to shift this point to the left, then it'd be x minus h. But when I shifted to the right, it was x plus h. When I shift to the left, it's x minus h. Here, when I shift it down, I'm going to be subtracting. Whatever I'm shifting is going to be now being subtracted from my y. And if I was going to go up, it would be y plus k. Now, h and k are just are just variables. They, we would, they would be represented by numbers. But what we're going to be talking about is how are we going to transform our parent graph just by looking at our equation. So this is y equals x squared. And there's, you know, a first and major important point of, a, of our quadratic is our vertex, which at this way is at 0, 0. And as long as if I can find the vertex, I can be able to transform that vertex and then this simply plot it up. Now, when we're talking about transformations, the easiest way to transform something is to make sure that's in vertex form, which is y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. So now, one thing I really want you to be aware of, this says x minus h, all right? x opposite of h. So when we're going to be looking at our values, h is going to be positive. It's just the minus of the h. So when we're going to be looking at values, when I say shift left or right, um, it's going to be in the opposite direction. And then this is k would be plus or minus. So therefore, when we talked about if I'm going to shift down, that means k is negative. So if I, have, you know, uh, if I have an equation where k is negative, that means I shift down. But since my equation says x opposite of h, if I have something like x plus 5, I'm actually going to be shifting into the negative direction because it's x opposite of h. So let's go and look at it. So whatever my value of h is, that's going to shift left or right. And remember, it's the opposite. And then k is going to be shift up, down. All right? And you're going to shift that many units. So let's just take a look at a couple of equations here. And I'll just kind of go through this. So let's say I have y equals 3x minus 2 squared plus 1. And let's do y equals negative 5x plus 1 squared minus 10. OK. Now, first of all, when looking at an equation like this, our a is not going to affect how we're going to be shifting it left or right. All right? But now I have x minus 2. So that's very similar to x minus h. So therefore, I can say my h is equal to 2. Right? So therefore, I'm going to be shifting two units to the right. Now let's look at the k. And in this case, I have k is positive 1, which is there, there. So I'm going to shift. So k equals 1. So that means shift one unit up. OK, because remember, whenever I'm adding something to my, um, to my y, we're adding it. That's going to be going up. Um, so now let's go ahead and take a look at this one. Again, the negative 5 is not going to mean anything. But now it's x plus 1. So the one way I like to look at this is you could also rewrite this as x minus a negative 1, right? And therefore, you can see it's x minus a negative 1. So therefore, my h is negative 1. So therefore, that means I'm going to shift one unit to the left. And then also, I'm going to shift 10 units down for my k. So that equals negative 10. 
So for shift, 10 units down. So there you go. That's just a quick, quick little introduction into what is a translation and a shift when using them for a quadratic in vertex form. Thanks.